Hello everybody and welcome to this Imperial Guard tactics video. Now if you're a regular here you will know that this is not Commissar Warwick speaking. Um, as Warwick said in his update video on the 3rd of March he is taking a bit of time out to do essays, dissertations and all the other uni work that is seeming to be mounting up. So he's taking a bit of time off of YouTube and I spoke to him and I said I'd do a video for him. Uh, for those of you who haven't worked out who I am yet, uh, my name is Michael and I come from Tactica Imperialis. You may or may not have heard of me. If you have, then cool. If you haven't, then hello. Um, if you want to watch any of my content, there'll be a link in the description. But anyway, I'm here to talk Imperial Guard. And what I want to talk about is the Force Multiplier Units. These are the units in your army that make the rest of your army just work a million times better. Because... Some say that um, with a machine, it's only as good as the sum of its parts. Well, the sum of its parts in a guard army is mostly guardsmen and tanks. And while that's great, it will only take you so far. So these force multiplier units generally will make it far greater than the sum of its parts. It makes those guardsmen far more capable of doing amazing things. You have tank commanders for doing that very, very loosely with your Lehman Rosses. But um, the main thing I'm going to be focusing on is getting the most out of your guardsmen. Or your other units in your army, such as, um, for example, I'm going to touch on Bulgrins. But, who are these force multipliers? Who are these great individuals? Well, they are mostly your HQ section. Kind of obviously. The Company Command Squad, the Lord Commissar, the Primary Psyker, and the Ministorum Priest. And I'm going to give an honourable mention to the Platoon Command Squad as well. And under Lord Commissar, I should probably also point out regular Commissars as well. So... Why are these guys so important to a guard army and what makes them make everybody else great? Because on their own, I mean, a company command squad is 60 points for a 7 wound toughness 3 5 plus armor save squad. With 3 wounds having a 5 plus invol. Nothing special. But, and this is a big but, they of course can issue orders. And with the exception of Commissar Yarrick, there is no other way to get senior officer orders such as bring it down and fire on my target than by taking a company command squad and or taking a special named character as an upgrade to a company command squad. So you need to take a company command squad anyway. So these are obviously what number I would swear by a company command squad as a HQ. Always. It's one of the two that I would always take. It does mean that your warlord is slightly more fragile and is very much based on well, hiding rather than actually killing things, but the value you get out of orders is insane. Seriously, it's just crazy. And there'll be whole tactical videos swathed across YouTube about how to use the order system effectively. But the main reason I want to talk about this one is because bring it down and, well, fire on my target, which the two orders you can't get anywhere else. And you have to have them, really, because they are your best anti- Everything that isn't a vehicle and isn't in cover mechanism. So monsters, vehicles, um, things in cover, all of these things you need a company command squad for. Plus you get some pretty cool warlord traits and the relics you can take on them are quite nice. But you can do that in most cases anyway. Um, the platoon, platoon command squad, my honourable mention because it sort of ties in. Now they're not as good as company command squads. But they cost half the price-ish. And you can take one of them for every infantry platoon you take, which in my opinion should be at least three in a decent sized game. Two if you have to really um, economise, but really you should be taking three platoons if you can. And that gives you another three order bubbles. Admittedly, they are only one order a turn, and you don't get access to all the orders, but you get the main ones, that being first rank fire, split fire, shoot and run, move, move, move. All these orders are really, really good. And again, there will be tacticals elsewhere about how to use the order system. Then we come on to the actual individual characters, which I more commonly would call force multipliers. The first one is the Minister and Priest. Now, when I actually looked at the Imperial Guard Codex, I thought Minister and Priest were kind of meh. But having seen them a lot in battle reports and um, on forums, I've come to realise how much value you can get out of these guys. 40 points to make an entire squad fearless. You never need worry about a morale check ever again because you're fearless. And that's amazing. Plus, you get Zealot. So on squads like Bulgrins, who have a ton of attacks but uh, kind of average weapon skill, that's re-rolls to hit the first round of melee, meaning that all those strength 5 attacks will actually land a hit. And that's really, really good. Plus on Guardsmen, it gives you just a hint of a chance in melee of putting a few wounds on. 
He then has battle hymns, so you can obviously get rerolls to wound, which again on things like Bulgrins is terrifying, or reroll saves so on sticky things or big squads like guardsmen fighting orc boys. I suppose it's a really good upgrade to have rerolling saves. Or if you absolutely need it, you can give him smash for strength six AP two, but he only has one maybe two attacks, so it's not great. But you could do it. And the main reason you take Priest is to make squads fearless. The Battle Hymns is a nice bonus, but he's there to make squads fearless. So he is best in low leadership squads, especially Conscripts and Bulgrins. But he's not as good in Blobs. Now, the reason he's not as good in Blobs is because he's only leadership 7. This shouldn't make a difference, but it does when you think about order tests. Because obviously order tests are not based on being fearless. They're based on your leadership of you guys, which in most cases will probably be 8 for a sergeant or 7 if he's, they've been sniped out for whatever reason. And the priest gives you no value in terms of orders because he doesn't have a higher leadership. So when it comes to putting squads into blobs, I prefer to attach to commissars. Now, regular commissars are, I think, the same cost or maybe a pinch cheaper than priests, which is always great. But they're leadership 9, meaning that those order tests which you'll be taking on a re-rollable leadership 8 if you paid for a Vox caster, which I generally recommend you do, um, will be on a re-rollable 9. And it's very hard to fail a re-rollable 9. I mean, it happens, but it's really difficult to do. Plus, you have summary execution. You don't have to activate summary execution, so it does give you that hint of flexibility that being straight up fearless doesn't give you. I mean, there's no drawback to fearless, like there is the summary execution, in that a guy gets killed, but... In most cases, there's plenty more where that dude came from. And yes, I know you might snipe one of your important dudes in the head, but that doesn't happen every time. You've got to A, fail the morale check, and then roll a 2 or 1. So it's unlikely. Whereas if you're just fearless, yeah, you're not going to kill anybody. Yeah, you're not going anywhere. But if you're stuck in a grinding melee with, I don't know, a horde of termagants or something, then you want to get out of that melee. So you don't mind losing a melee to fall back, regroup pretty much immediately because you're leadership 9, or through get back in the fight, and then calling in an order barrage and going, thank you very much, wapow, Termagant's dead. Or at the very least, allowing the rest of your army to open up. So that's that flexibility, because you don't have to activate the execution. Lord Commissars go to a whole different level. Yes, they have summer execution, but they have an actual good stat line. They're not just like a platoon commander stat line. They're weapon skill 5, 3 attacks, 3 wounds. You only really need to give him carapace armor and a power weapon and maybe melter bombs, and he's done. You could give him a better weapon, a pistol, I would think, like the Emperor's Benediction for 5 points, but his main focus is, as much as it's kicking butt, is his leadership 10 stubborn. You try passing or failing a leadership test when you're leadership 10 and stubborn, it's very difficult. So any, I don't know, Dark Eldar negative leadership modifiers, um, nope, thank you, try again, because I'm still leadership 10 because I'm stubborn, which is great. And it means that your order tests are a re-rollable 10 with no modifiers, and that's great. Plus, with Aura of Discipline, all units within 6 inches have leadership 10. Which, if you stick him in a Chimera, on his own, with a platoon command squad, with a veteran squad, whatever, everything within six inches of that tank is leadership 10, I think. You may have to take him out of the tank to do that, but everything within six inches is leadership 10. I mean, all your orders suddenly become 100 million times easier to do with a re-rollable 10 compared to a re-rollable 7 or 8. It's just amazing. Plus, yes, he's not your warlord, so you can be a little bit more... Um, I don't want to say carefree with him because he's got a lot of useful buffs, but you can throw him into melees and expect him to come out the other side. And if he doesn't, he's not your warlord because of chain of command. Well, assuming you've taken a company commander, he's not your warlord. And that's great. So I think you can get a great bit of synergy between commissars, priests and lord commissars. What combination you run is personal preference. I personally think priests in squads where executing things is either bad where executing things is bad, or where you're not taking orders. So, Bulgrins, Conscripts, I guess Rattlings if you really wanted to, or something like that. Whereas I think Commissars find their home in the Infantry Platoon with Infantry Squads, 
special weapon squads and heavy weapon squads because special and heavy weapon squads don't have sergeants and don't have a vox so they're stuck on a crappy leadership seven meaning you pass just over half the time but realistically it's only about half the time you pass being leadership nine because the commissar's around one means your commissar's probably not going to die unless you're running him in special weapons that go up into the face but it also means your order tests become way way easier when it's leadership nine over leadership seven and that's great. Law Commissars can go anywhere. They're just designed to anchor a battle line and then maybe kick some butt if needs be. The last one is the Primaris Psyker. Now, Psykers became one of the most awesome sets of units that I think are in the book. Yes, the disciplines are random. Yes, the psychic phase is divisive, I guess. But I really like it and I like Primaris Psykers a lot. One, they're another source of Leadership 9. So if you don't want to put a Commissar into a big expensive squad because you don't want him shooting dudes a la veterans tempestus scions um or maybe even ogwins or something like that then you can put a primary psyker in there just don't put him in the same squad as a commissar because it's for your own good is a thing meaning that he will shoot the primary psyker if you peril so don't put them in the same squad just don't um but your main reason for primary psyker is not just for the leadership buff but he has a force weapon which means you have another way to get a little bit of power into a squad Again, Bulgrins and Ogrins come to mind. And he has access to every discipline except telepathy. So divination is obvious because re-rolls and re-rolls and more re-rolls are amazing. Or overwatching on full ballistic skill with a blob is amazing. So those sorts of powers are obviously a great choice for 50, 75 points, depending on you give them a level 2, which I recommend you do. But an alternative build that I've run recently is with Biomancy. Because Biomancy's primary power, Smite, is Strength 4, AP 2, Assault 4. And that basically means it's really good at killing heavy infantry. There's a second power in there, I've forgotten the name of it, which is Strength 6, AP 2, Assault 2, which most times you fire should at least make a Terminator take his inbound save, or put a wound on something without one. And that's really, really good. Plus you have Hemorrhage as your big um, final power, it's Warp Charge 2. And two toughness tests, or I think it's just take a wound. It could even be die, but I think it's just take a wound, which is really good. And it has that knock-on effect, which on low toughness um, armies with good saves, such as um, maybe Eldar, Eldar Aspect Warriors, that's terrifyingly good. I mean, on average, they will fail every time, take a wound with no armor saves, pretty much die, and you just wipe out half a squad, or even an entire squad. It's amazing to do. So I think because you um, don't have to take them as a HQ slot, they're sort of a HQ but not a HQ, I would run one cycle with Divination and one cycle with Biomancy if I had the points. In a pinch, I'd probably pick the Divination cycle because rerolls, but I'd love to take both. The Divination cycle belongs in your battle line. The Biomancy cycle belongs in your big hitter units where you can use his AP2 powers or activate his Force Weapon and then go Iron Arm or something, or Warp Speed, to really put the hurt on units that that unit charges. So, that is my thoughts on Force Multipliers within the Imperial Guard. I think they are some of the best value units in the book, because a Lord Commissar is only about 70 points, a Priest is 40, a Primary Psyker is 50, a Commissar is only like 35, and Command Squads are cheap as well, even though there are some mandatory things you have to do with them. But... They are really good, and I thoroughly recommend you use as many of them as possible. So, um, that concludes this video. If you enjoyed this, make sure to leave it a like rating and share it wherever you like sharing videos. Uh, leave a comment down below. I or Warwick would love to speak to you about what you think on Force Multipliers. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you do, because it would be really worth your time. If you want to check out any more of my content, then there will be a link to my channel in the description if that takes your fancy. So, on behalf of Commissar Warwick, my name is Michael, and I will see you again. Bye for now.